iMovie must be responsible for thousands and thousands of people getting into production. YouTube or any other form of video. I myself learned to edit on it and it enabled me to one day go pro. But now, just how good is it? And should you buy a Mac specifically to use it? Let's look at the pros and cons to find out. We shall start with the pros. Oh, and by the way, we're going to edit this entire video on iMovie. Seems only right iMovie's main trump card is its simplicity. We recently made a video about the editing basics to mask to become a great editor. You can watch that here. iMovie allows you to do all of the things that we mentioned in it. You can quickly import your files, add them to your timeline, and cut them. Removing mistakes is fast, splitting clips is easy, and it does all of the basics someone new to editing as well as someone experienced might need very well. Once you have added your files and lined them up, if you're not happy with the look of them, you can do basic color corrections. So you can change the exposure, making darker clips lighter, and play with the saturation. For videos shot on phones and GoPros, you don't need more than this to get going. Check out what you're watching right now. Even on a pro camera, you can take a grey looking flat video and pump it up to something that pops. Even the auto correction works well, but I would encourage you not to rely on this. Try to get your shots working in the camera viewfinder. This can then mean you can do no wrong. The white balance and skin tone balance are a little hit and miss too. I mean, they're not tweakable, so you're at the mercy of the software, and you'll probably find they work great sometimes and then suck other times. They also include Instagram style filters. Personally, I'd stay clear from them unless you're using them as a device that helps tell a story. For example, if you wanted to make a reference to some information that's outdated, you could pretend it was filmed back in the day like this. By all means, play with them, but don't try to find uses for them for the sake of using them. iMovie gives you three layers to work with. The first, if you're editing a vlog, is where your narrative is like to sit. On, to on top of that, you can easily add B-roll, and below, you can add sound effects and music. We've edited about 132 videos for our own channel over 10 months. I'm struggling to think of many that needed more than this. Yes, another layer to build on top would be nice, but for the average small creator, they won't need it, and it will just overcomplicate things. Adding text is also with Doddle, but I would say the options they give you are a little bit annoying. I edit on Final Cut Pro most of the time and use the basic effect in this a lot. This isn't actually an effect, it's just a boring old static text. This option doesn't seem to exist. As a default, yes you can customise the options a little to keep it simple, but I feel this encourages creators to use the outdated and often cheesy animations when they'd make much slicker videos without them. At first it would appear you don't have many fonts, but you can add them from your computer's library and download new free fonts and adding them as well is quite simple. So there's an unlimited supply online. Unfortunately, from a pro point of view, you can't really do much with them like adding a stroke around the edges, but it's not going to be a deal breaker unless like us, you use the stroke in your own videos a lot. <laughs> In the effects armory, we have the staples. Slow motion, which will depend a lot on how you've shot the footage. If you've shot in a low frame rate, it'll look very jerky. If you went above 60 frames per second, it works quite well. You can add in rewinds, fast forwards, and freeze frames too. We tend to find we use all of these in our own vlogs, so it's nice to see them included. You can actually use these effects to tell a story without them being too cheesy. Keyboard shortcuts are something editors come to love. Greg, who works for us, uses shortcuts so much on Final Cut Pro, when he's editing, he's almost typing his videos. We're trying to see if we can take away his mouse. It's quite beautiful to watch. There are some key editing shortcuts here we like. Command B, which turns the playhead into a blade tool. You can cut clips in the middle like so. Trust us, this saves a lot of time over the long haul. Alt and forward slash, another personal time-saving favorite, makes the grade. It deletes everything after the placehead, and also hitting up and down on the keyboard moves the placehead to the beginning or end of a clip. Try them out, if you get it, you'll love them. Finally, the uploading feature saves a lot of mucking about. You can send your video straight to YouTube and other platforms, or export it to your desktop. What we don't like about iMovie. Well, firstly, Apple need to embrace aspect ratio. It'd be nice if you could make videos in a square, so they're insta-ready. There are ways around this using Keynote, the free presentation software that you get on a Mac, but it's too much effort, and Keynote, from my experience, is clunky as anything when you start adding large video files. Keyframing, this is also a big deal on what's missing, for good reason though I think. Keyframing is basically animating things or moving things. So if you wanted to move text across the screen so it flies about from A to B, you can't really do that. Now it might sound basic, but keyframing is a big deal. The option it opens up 
for more advanced editing are infinite. I'm sure they could put it in, but that would mean less people upgrading to Final Cut Pro. In a way, this is actually a good thing for small creators. It will force you to set up your shots properly, not just think, I'll slide it about in the edit. The second downside is the sound controls. They're basic, which means you'll never be able to rescue poor audio. I mean, it's tough on pro software anyway, so just make sure you always think about that when you're filming. Then there's the keying and the green screen removal side of things. Yes, it's 100% usable, but you don't get many options to perfect the key. So you have to make sure you light the person and the background perfectly to make sure they don't look like an 80s knockoff. This requires a lot of space to do so too. You also can't move the person on camera due to the lack of keyframes, and the only way you can do it is by cropping and then sliding the now slightly worse resolution person about. In conclusion, all of our cons are way too harsh on the free software. If you're thinking about getting a Mac to make videos on, then this is a no-brainer. All of these cons are actually a good thing. iMovie does the basics so well, it will make you a really fab basic editor with practice. You'll find workarounds for the styles you want to create. Not only that, but it's super fast, there's a ton of YouTube support videos out there, and if you love editing, transitioning to Final Cut down the line will feel pretty easy. If you're still here and you thought, you know what, that wasn't actually too shabby, then why not join us on our 10 year channel growing adventure by hitting subscribe and grow with us. And also, dive into more editing help videos or check out our latest release. Oh, and if you want some backing traps for your videos, then there's 10% of Soundstripe in the link below. 